you know, sometimes it's hard to admit that in certain circumstances, it would have been better to keep what you had rather than getting something different. But in this particular case, I had my 2016 F-150 since it was brand new. I had it for eight years, put about 140,000 miles on it. That had the 2.7 EcoBoost in it and it was paid off. It didn't owe me anything, but couple reasons I got rid of it the turbos were having issues which I could have fixed uh, the cab was a little bit too small for my kids we'd go on road trips they were complaining that their legs were getting all cramped and things like that and uh, I kind of wanted something different so one of my previous videos my uh, PA plow day video I talked about my new truck this is a 2013 f-150 with a 5 liter coyote v8 in it and it only had uh, 87,000 miles when I bought it Right now it's got just over 92 or 93,000 on it. And since I bought this, I've had to do a considerable amount of work to it. And I think, you know, the body is in pretty, pretty good condition. The only place where there's any rust is the very underside of the rocker panels. And you can't even see it because it has running boards on it. And the bed rails obviously have a little bit of uh, crust on them. But other than that, the, the body's in excellent condition. Um, the floors aren't rotted or anything like that. The frame's in good condition. And this had a two inch leveling kit in the front, I believe. And when I got it, the rear suspension was just about even. So like, if you look at the truck now, it looks like it's pretty level front to rear, but that actually annoys me because when you put a trailer on the truck, it's gonna sag down a little bit. So after I got it, had a couple things I needed to fix. The passenger side exhaust manifold, was cracked so i took the time it took me about three days taking my time to fix that i also fixed a whole bunch of pinholes in the exhaust the uh the y pipe had a bunch of leaks in it it was leaking after the y pipe um the original resonator had a bunch of holes in it and so i fixed all the exhaust stuff that wasn't that big of a deal um you know again it took me a few days just taking my time to make sure i did it right and then uh, I replaced the resonator with just a really skinny, small, I think it's a volant or something like that resonator, three inches ID, and it's only a foot long. So it's a little tiny resonator. Um, this truck has a, a Flowmaster 50 series single inlet dual outlet muffler on it. And right now it's a little bit too loud. So I'm going to be working on that tonight. But I mean, since I bought this truck, I did the passenger exhaust manifold, fixed a bunch of stuff on the exhaust. I've done brake pads and rotors all the way around. There's still something wrong with the brakes on this. When you push the brakes hard, it pulls to the right. And then if you push them harder, it pulls to the left. So it almost seems like the fluid's not getting through the calipers correctly. Um, the driver's side front caliper was replaced at one point with a factory Ford one. When they did that, they actually put different pads on both sides of the truck. So they left the original pads on the passenger side and they put the new pads with a loaded caliper on the driver's side. So that was hokey. So now I have power stop pads all the way around this truck. I have drilled slotted rotors in the front. I have regular rotors in the back. I actually put lift blocks in it after I bought it and then I towed with it and the rear leaf springs in this thing were the light duty ones. They only had basically the top leaf, one leaf in the middle, and then an overload. So they were like a 1500 pound capacity spring. And after the first time I towed, the rear end of the truck actually was sagging more than the front again, even after putting lift blocks in it. So I decided to buy the 1900 pound leaf springs. I replaced the leaf springs, put those in, and once again, after putting in the new leaf springs and putting the factory one inch lift blocks back in, the truck's level again, but it's not good enough for me. I want it to be raked about an inch and a half to two inches in the back. So I'm actually gonna take my factory leaf springs, take the center leaf out of those, add it into the new leaf springs to make them have a higher spring capacity and hopefully keep a little bit more of the arch in there. This truck must be a pig because I don't know how well you'll be able to see it in the video probably not very well, but these leaf springs are basically flat. I mean, after putting these brand new leaf springs in, and these are 1900 pound leaf springs, there's almost no arch left to them. So they basically go flat as soon as you put weight of the truck on the springs. 
and they're supposed to have a pretty good arch to them. So I want this to have a little more arch. I want it to have a little bit more weight capacity. So I'm gonna add another leaf into those leaf springs. Um, the sunroof track broke, so I fixed that. But all this to be said, I like this truck so much that even though I've had to do all of these annoying things to it since I bought it, I still love this truck. I mean, it has a really cool interior. It's comfortable. I've driven it to um, Pennsylvania and back. Drives great on the highway, but with that Flowmaster exhaust, it is too loud. And I'm gonna show you what the whole exhaust system looks like now. I'll roll some old clips in from the exhaust when I first got done patching up some holes and putting that small resonator in. Well, I found one exhaust leak. And this is the new system. You can see where I welded a two and a half to three inch adapter right off of the flange. I cleaned the flange all up so that's seating well again. This is a stainless steel vibrant three inch in and out 12 inch long resonator. Don't pay any attention to that. I had to grind a hanger off of there. This is all three inch pipe going back to the muffler. And then these hangers were actually on this piece of pipe that I bought. It was a piece of pipe for like a one ton box truck or something like that. It was the perfect length. So ended out using the hangers. I cut one off the pipe and then welded it back on. Fits perfect. And that's the muffler going out to the two and a quarter inch tailpipes. And then what I'm gonna put in this truck, taking out the Flowmaster and putting in what is now my new favorite muffler, the Cherry Bomb Salute. Now this is a knockoff of a MagnaFlow, fully stainless steel welded muffler, straight through design. So the exhaust comes in here, it splits out into a Y and goes out the other end. You look down in that muffler, this will be better if I had some light. You can kind of see that perforated core inside and you can see all the way out the other side of the muffler. So I have put these mufflers in my last, I don't know, three or four vehicles. I had one of these in my other F-150. I had three of these actually in my wife's Explorer because that had a center resonator and two rear mufflers. I replaced all three of them with these. My Bel Air has these in it. And I'm trying to think, what did I have before? I had a 91 K-1500 that I also put basically the same thing. I think it was like a Jones exhaust brand, but it was exactly the same setup as this. Um, this is an 18 inch body, overall length is 24 inches, and this should replace exactly what's in the truck. So and it sounds really good, but it drones like crazy on the highway. So that's what I'm gonna be cutting out. Basically gonna cut the pipe right here and cut it at the tailpipes right back here and stuff the new muffler in here, weld it all back up, and that should quiet it down. Now, ironically, even though these are straight through, the way that the muffler is designed with the packing and everything, because there are no baffles in there, the sound doesn't resonate around inside, so it'll actually be quieter overall. It won't have as much rasp, and it shouldn't have any drones. So let's get started. Gotta make sure your tool's big enough for the job. That's right. 12 inch sawzall blade for a 3 inch exhaust pipe. So you have two here.
made quick work of that. Now here's the Flowmaster after I took it out of the truck, and this is an 8430502. This muffler itself is probably still good, but I was starting to see down here, you can see the soot on these weld joints. That means that it was starting to leak through the welds. And this one has quite a few miles on it. All the weld joints, they're just kind of flaking apart. So it would need to be replaced probably in the dead of winter when I don't want to be under my truck working on it. So that's another reason I'm replacing this now. Um, this particular muffler was a three inch in, dual two and a half out, and they had flared out the rear pipes from two and a quarter to two and a half. The new muffler, which is over here still, is three inch in and two and a quarter out. And uh, this one should slip right on the pipes. I might have to extend the pipes a tiny bit because I cut them back, but you can see the mufflers are the same size virtually, so that's a good thing. But yeah, I'm probably going to have to maybe extend the pipes a little bit, and I do have this really thick wall galvanized pipe. Maybe it's not even galvanized, I don't know. Looks like it might be galvanized, but I have this really thick two and a quarter inch pipe that's flared out. so. If I need to extend my tailpipes, I'll just cut some little pieces off, shove that in the muffler, weld it on, and then shove that on the tailpipe. So let's see what I got to do. Now, I don't have a ton of flexibility in the system. It's kind of where stuff is is where it needs to go. But I should have enough room that I can get those pipes in here. So I have the jack stand there just in case I need to prop the muffler up. Let's see how that new muffler fits. And whether or not I'm going to have to extend out the two pipes or not. I might be able to just pull them forward a quarter of an inch too, so... Of course, now they're in the way. Oh, that slipped right on like a glove. And yeah, tailpipes are too short now. So, I'm going to need to cut that other pipe I have make some extensions probably they only have to be you know i really only have to extend the pipe about an inch inch and a half but the way those extensions are um because it's a slip on and slip in what i'll do is only leave about maybe a half an inch in between the uh, flared fitting and the other part of it so that these will easily slip into that muffler and then I'll uh, weld all that stuff up. So let me go get my chop saw and I'll cut that piece up so I can get some good short enough pieces. I will probably, I might tack weld those in the muffler before I put the muffler in just to save some welding under the truck because I really hate welding under the truck. Let's take this guy back out and then I'm also going to have to make a hanger for this because the hanger was welded on the other muffler, so ah, there's that. I don't always have really nice welds, but when I do, it's on exhaust where you can't see them. Hopefully the rest of the pipes will look this good. 
my Harbor Freight welder's doing great. My Harbor Freight helmet's doing great. I did have to buy a new regulator for my gas tank, though, because the Harbor Freight one broke, like, the first time I used it, but... All right, so I'm gonna go unplug my battery so I don't fry my computer, and then shove this in the truck and start burning it in. Oops. All right, so here we are. Now we have the... We have the salute muffler in here. I'm gonna do a start, drive it off of these sketchy ramps before they fall over, and then do a little rev and see how it sounds. this is going to be pretty good and again I'm not so much trying to reduce the noise overall but I'm more trying to reduce the drone because I hate drone so let's see what it looks like under there now same tailpipes you can see the muffler welded in now did a pretty decent job welding it not perfect but not bad and got a hanger on the back of it so at some point I have to finish welding up I had to change the crossover pipe between the two sides of the exhaust in the front that has a tiny leak in it but for now that'll do it I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so join me for the next time on Cranky Motorsports